Good morning, everyone. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, we have a question to begin with. So let's check these questions. Sir, as you said, during Great Depression 1929, Chiang Kai shek was in power in China. Yes, after 1928, he was the one who was the head of the republic, uh, who is a pro capitalist. Yes, he is pro capitalist. Then, what is the effect of Great Economic Depression on China? Okay. So, the impact of the Great Depression on China as such, see, uh, the impact is the same all across the world. The whole world, it is reeling under the pressure of depression. So the Chinese exports, they came down because the world is not buying. So therefore, like there was economic activity in depression in the rest of the world, similarly, the economic activity was in depression in China. In India also, it was in depression. right? So therefore, the exports from China, they would decline. right? That is what will happen. So earlier, a lot of exports would be going outside of China for consumption, either as most only as raw materials because China, it was not industrialized. So therefore, uh, the export income of China, it would come down. Right? It came down. Right? So therefore, that is how the impact of the Great Depression on China it is. Okay? So that's uh, how it is. So now let us begin. So today, our topic of discussion, it is going to be the World War I. Right? right? Now, um, I do not expect a question from World War I and from World War II because very recently there was a question that was Hitler or was Germany responsible for World War I and World War II. Something like that came. But anyways, uh, because these are two important topics, so we will be covering them. But uh, students, they should keep in mind that uh, I do not foresee that for the next couple of years a direct question from the World War I. Uh, even from the World War II will come. Rather, I expect the questions to be coming more from those areas which has not been touched by the UPSC like Cold War. Right? So, so anyways, we will be doing the topic, but we will do it with a little speed. We will do it relatively, we will do it with a little bit, but we will do it with a little bit. So anyways, we will complete the syllabus and we will not have any attention to it. There has been a small technical issue in our... There has been a small technical issue in our... One of our classes, whereby some portion of 30 odd minutes is missing. So therefore, we thought that the best way to compensate you for this is like uh, we can do the class or those 30 minutes again. So that's why uh, we are here, and we are using the same PPT. Uh, luckily, I had saved all the drawings which I made on the board. So therefore, it will uh, prevent you from uh, making because when I teach, it is a spontaneous. So therefore, uh, since we are using the same. PPT or the same handwritten material, so it will sink in the sink. So I hope this resolves your problem. Anyways, so let us begin our class. We were discussing World War I. So World War I, it happened from 1914 to 1918. And we began with looking at war in general. That there are certain basic principles which are there related to war. So basically, first of all, we discussed that what is a war. War, it is basically an exercise or it is a tool in domain of foreign policy. What happens is when nations are unable to resolve their disputes through negotiation or through diplomacy, then as a last resort, war is the tool to settle the dispute. Right? So therefore, that's why we say that war, it is an exercise or a tool in, a, in the domain of foreign policy. Right? So therefore, there can be countries which use war as a tool of their foreign policy. For example, the fascist regimes of Hitler, Mussolini, they will use that. That's why we call them you know, extremely, uh, extreme, having extreme nationalism and, you know, having a capacity to disturb the world peace. Anyways, so therefore, wars are fought when diplomacy fails and now parties involved, they try to resolve their disputes through war, right? Now, when do you fight a war? So what are the reasons? First point mentioned is national interest of a country. That is real politic, meaning all of these things that uh, whether any country is uh, let's say fighting a war, when we say that a country is fighting a war for the purposes of maintaining world peace, false. When we say a country is fighting a war to preserve democracy, false. Simple thing is whenever any country fights a war, then it is putting lives of its soldiers, that is its citizens on the line. It is using the money which it has collected from the taxpayers. So therefore, there is no austerity, uh, there is no um, this thing, altruism kind of a thing and therefore real politic that means real national interest they govern the decisions of war and peace so war it is a very very costly affair so whenever any nation it does a cost benefit analysis or usme usko lagta hai that the benefits they outweigh the cost so therefore then they fight war right so therefore national interest of a country that 
is what determines that whether a war is fought or not. So that becomes a reason for the war, right? For example, there can be economic interest and there can be geopolitical interest. For example, what can be the geopolitical interest? Like balance of power. Imagine a situation that there is a country which is the dominant power in the region. And now some other country, it is rising and it is rising fast. Therefore, the pre-existing dominant power, it might feel threatened. That with the rise of, for example, Germany, the Britishers, they felt threatened. Right? And then it will, what it will do, it will result in increased chances of war. If through negotiations and if through diplomacy, these two powers are unable to coordinate things. So therefore, the pre-existing dominant power to maintain balance of power, it might engage in a war with this rising country. Right? So what do you mean by balance of power? It means that I, I the Britain, is a top power and rest of the players in the region, they are equal powers but much smaller than me individually. So therefore, there is no one dominant power among them. This is how I am maintaining a balance of power. Right? So this is a foreign policy uh, doctrine, you can say, maintaining balance of power. This we discussed when we discussed the uh, your uh, Congress uh, of Vienna. Right? So therefore, there we mentioned this, that how after your demise of Napoleon or defeat of Napoleon, a balance of power, it was established in the world affairs. Such territorial distribution was done so that there is a balance of power in Europe and Britain is the number one power. Right? Then economic interest, they will also go on the national interest. So second kind of economic interest can be uh, national interest. For, uh, uh, second kind of national interest can be economic interest. For example, colonies. Colonies, they are a source of uh, cheap raw material and they are also an assured export market. So therefore, if any country has a colony, then the colony, it is a great asset, great economic asset, because we can use the resources of the colony for our growth. We can empower the colony for our growth. So therefore, there can be wars because of the economic interest of colonies. That is when nations are fighting against each other to get a colony. Then another aspect can be to preserve trade and investment. So therefore, countries, they can fight, they can, they can go on and fight war to preserve trade and investment. Right? So if they feel that uh, there is a regime in any country which can threaten our trade, which can threaten our investment, then they can go ahead and fight a war. For example, later on, when we discuss Cold War, so there we talk about the Suez War of 1956. So the Suez Canal was very, very important for the Britishers. It was built in 1859 to 69 and uh, it reduced the distance between Britain and India by 4,500 miles, right? So Egypt, it had become independent from Britain in 1922. However, the Britishers, they were present in the Suez Canal since 1922, especially there was a treaty in 1936. So when Gamal Abdel Nasser, who was the president of Egypt since 1954, when he tried to eject the Britishers from the Suez Canal, there was a war called Suez War of 1956. So why that war is being fought? Because the Britishers, they are trying to preserve their trade and investment. Right? Then second point, role of personalities can also be there. There can be certain rulers who do not shy away from fighting a war or who make war more likely. For example, the World War I, it is blamed upon the Kaiser of Germany, that is the King of Germany. Right? So therefore, uh, that he was reckless and he brought the world closer to the World War One. Matab, unka personality aisa tha, that he believed that all of these disputes which are there between Germany on one side, Britain and France on another side, they can be resolved only through war. So therefore, till the point of time Bismarck was there in the office as Chancellor, the relations between the different uh, European countries and Germany, they were fine. But once Bismarck, he start, stepped down, after that we see that the Kaiser, you know, the next Kaiser, you know, he was more reckless. Well, just similarly, we can just as an example, similarly, uh, fascist leaders like uh, Mussolini or uh, Hitler. So therefore, it is in their personality, uh, they are the ones who are responsible for foreign policy of the country, they are dictators, and therefore, they adopted war as a tool of their foreign policy. So therefore, the personality, it can also impact. Similarly, Napoleon, he believed in war victories. So therefore, Napoleon, if when he was there, he made war more likely. So therefore, there can be role of personalities also as one of the reasons for the war. Then third, role of ideology or morals. For example, peace. Second point, pro-war. Example, fascist or dictators. Right? So therefore, role of ideology. So here we have said Hitler, Napoleon and Mussolini. So that point is valid here. That ideology of a regime 
और अ लीडर कैन बी प्रो वॉर राइट तो वो एग्जाम्पल हो गया सेकेंड टू मेंटेन वर्ल्ड पीस राइट सो देर कैन दे फोर समन कैन से दैट वी आर फॉर एग्जाम्पल द लीग ऑफ नेशन एंड द यूनाइटेड नेशन दे हैव द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ मेंटेनिंग वर्ल्ड पीस सो इफ द यूनाइटेड नेशन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल टूडे सैंक्शन एनी एक्शन to prevent to maintain world peace then we can say that okay collectively the united nation has initiated a war against an aggressive nation so as to control it so as to maintain world peace so that can also be a reason right so therefore these are the different reasons which can exist for a war what is the character of the war so as we have mentioned wars they are very costly they are costly from a human na- nature perspective they are costly from the economic nature perspective right psychological uh, traumas etc anyways so the character of the war that it is very very devastating for example a there will be loss of soldiers when there is a war b loss of civilians and infrastructure if war is fought on my home ground so this phenomenon that we see that europe it was devastated by the two world wars of world war 1 and world war 2 why because it was the battle ground for these wars whereas outside of europe matlab britain it is part of europe but it is detached on mainland of europe britain did not uh, witness that uh, war being fought on its home ground that is soldiers did not set foot on the land of britain similarly in the case of japan in the world war 1 soldiers they did not set foot on the land of japan in the case of us in both the world wars no soldiers no foreign soldiers they set foot on the us soil as such except for one small incident in world war 2 anyways that is negligent so therefore when battles are being fought on your home ground then shelling will take place firing will take place as a collateral damage your buildings will be devastated your bridges will be devastated your civilians they might die right many of the businesses they will be disrupted so therefore if war it is fought on your home ground then the loss of civilians and infrastructure it is there and it is very worse third they are costly so as you mentioned that because of point number b there is cost of life because of point number a and cost of economics and life because of point number b similarly what we can say they are costly how they require huge amount of money to be fought a country might increase recruitment so for low population countries european countries they do not have very large standing armies whereas india which is very populous china which is very populous they have large standing armies right standing armies mean uh, people they are in the army large number of people they are in the army and that's their career right whereas in case of european nations what they do is they have small standing armies and they have conscription that is compulsory military service for the youth which is there in the college and at times of war they go ahead and they recruit right at the times of war they go ahead and recruit so therefore there is increased recruitment for example today uncle sam uncle sam is used for us so what is this uncle sam so basically when us wanted to recruit soldiers during the world war 1 world war 2 so therefore they came up with this kind of a logo where this is uncle sam theek hai and uncle sam was basically uh, actually kuch khana diya jata tha us khane ka jo brand tha wo kuch uncle sam se related tha theek hai anyways matlab wo kuch is type ka end mein ban gaya that uncle sam wants to recruit you right so therefore a call was given to the youth of the us that fight for us right so therefore any these low population countries or relatively the european countries they have this increased recruitment during the t- time of war and obviously when you recruit soldiers you would be giving them um, you know salaries you will be giving them pensions if they die right so therefore there is increased cost second point is there are cost because of weapons gears so when any country is fighting a war more and more weapons are required gears are required gears mean for example my helmet my bulletproof jacket my gloves ठीक है, so my shoes, all of these are gears. so therefore I'll be requiring all of these equipment. so therefore there is increased expenditure by a country which is fighting war on weapons and gears. third point it is their expenditure on logistics. so for example if US today fights a war, then it would have to move tanks, it would have to move guns, it would have to move other kinds of arms and ammunitions, soldiers, trucks from US across the Atlantic or across the Pacific. to whichever areas where us is fighting war that's why one of the biggest lesson for us was the lessons of the logistics when the us intervened in iraq and afghanistan that how to fight war in such a far off away land obviously world war 1 and the world war 2 they were also experiences so therefore there is huge cost of the logistics movement of soldiers movement of supplies there is a huge cost then what we have fiscal deficit 
So when such huge amount of expenditure is done, then the government is spending more. When your spendings are more and your earnings are less and you are a government, then what do you have? Fiscal deficit. When your spendings are less and your income is more, then you have fiscal surplus. So therefore, obviously, when you are doing such huge amount of expenditure, then the government increases its expenditure and as a result, the country it faces fiscal deficit. And as you would have studied in your economics, when there is fiscal deficit, then there is increase in inflation because there is excess printing of money. Foreign debt in World War One and in the World War Two. The European countries, they took loans from the United States of America to fight the war. And after World War I, there was this huge burden of debt on countries like Italy, France, Britain also. So therefore, a country might incur foreign debt when it is fighting the war, right? Because it needs money for all of these things. So therefore, this is how you are, this is the character of the war. It is very, very devastating economically and obviously on the human side, right? So therefore, this point we discussed. Next, what we have is... The second slide. So when to fight a war? So countries, they do a cost benefit analysis, right? So there are certain costs and there are certain benefits of the war, right? So therefore, what are the costs? So cost we have already discussed, okay? So cost we have already discussed. The cost is already discussed, okay? So plus here we that war costs are less when battles are not fought in own country. So we have already discussed. So what are the benefits of the war? So Every country would do a cost benefit analysis and if the benefits they outweigh the cost then they would go ahead and they would fight war. So for example first gain of colonies. Colonies which are source of raw materials and export markets. So therefore the world war one it was fought because of colonial rivalry. Colonies they are a short supply of raw material and the population of a colony it can become your export market. You can export your goods to the colony and the people of the colony they will buy it. So therefore a country can see that okay if I fight the war these are the costs the benefit is a colony so if I feel that addition of a colony to my uh, country will result in great economic boost to my country then I can go ahead and fight a war second aspect is preserve status as a regional power or as a world power that can be a benefit the point that we discussed regarding balance of power short term benefit can be war acts as a source of fiscal stimulus by increasing demand of war related sectors so basically there is a short term benefit. Kaise? Long term problem is fiscal deficit. But what is the short term issue? For example, right now when the COVID crisis took place, the governments all across the world, they came out with fiscal stimulus. They said that we will be spending huge amount of money. We'll be giving money free of cost to people. We'll be like US, it deposited huge amount of money in the bank accounts of the US citizens. Right? Why? So that when the economy is down, then there should not be problem of low demand. Therefore, let us put money in the pockets of people so that the people they are spending. So that there is demand. When there is demand, the engine of economy keeps on running. When there is demand, the factories they will have the demand so as to increase the supply or so as to continue the supply. This is how fiscal stimulus works. Now, when a war happens, any government would give huge amount of orders for gears, for arms and ammunition, for equipments, right? And for there will be huge demand for steel because I need to produce more trucks. I need to produce more tanks, right? So therefore, what will happen is that multiple sectors which are related to war, is called war industry. So if on Google you search war industry of, uh, or simplest type of sentence that World War II gave, gave a huge boost to the war industry of US, you will find an article and you will be able to connect what I'm talking about. Right? So Google ek bar karke dekho that um, the World War II boosted the war industry of Europe like anything. So basically these are war related sectors. So the war, it increases demand for the war related sectors. The war expenditure, it acts like a fiscal stimulus for these sectors. And therefore there is, for the short term, there is a sudden spurt in employment. There can be sudden spurt in the profits of the companies. Right? So this is how it operates. So this is like a short term benefit, but no one fights a war for this particular purpose. Although there is a conspiracy theory that whenever the US economy it goes down, US goes ahead and fight a war, fights a war. There is a conspiracy theory. Anyways, take care. So this is point number four. So if countries win the war plus point number B, make gains from the war in form of colonies or capturing export markets, then these gains may cover cost of war. Okay. For example, if a country wins a war and it captures colonies, 
or it captures additional territory then the natural resources which are there in the land of that territory they are of the country right similarly so usse to fayda ho gayi dusra ek aur cheez ye ho sakta hai for example in the world war 1 and in the world war 2 the european economies they got devastated right and as a result what happened that indirectly the japanese and the us exports they increased because european exports they were replaced by japanese and us exports so it was a unintended consequent unintended benefit to the japanese and the us why because the us economy got devastated a lot of battles they were fought on the ground of the uh, europe right so therefore european economies they got devastated and therefore us and japanese economies they captured or they uh, they captured the export markets of europe theek hai to unke exports badh gaye but theek hai ye ek side benefit hai uh, no one will talk about it like uh, openly ki hum isliye ladai lad rahe hain so that we can get rid of our export competition theek hai so anyways but this is how things operate the third side that we discuss is context of the world war 1 so when we discuss the context of the world war 1 we talked about number 1 europe dominated the rest of the world except americas meaning america or the us it uh, us was the number 1 economic power by the time of 1914 uh, its industrialization has begun in 1865 properly and by the time period of 1914 it had got enough time to properly industrialize and therefore as a result have the number one economy of the world however us was following a policy of isolation under the monroe doctrine of 1823 so therefore the political affairs of the world they were dominated by europe up africa ka map dekh lo in africa all european powers are there if you look at china pacific most of them are european powers yes us it is engaging with the rest of the world in the domain of economics it is doing trade but politically it does not want to be part of any conflict so therefore that's why we say that the world affairs they are dominated by Europe. So Europe dominated rest of the world except Americas. Why? Because under the Monroe Doctrine of 1823, US had said that my backyard, that is Central America and South America, they will be under my domination. I do not want any interference by Europeans in my backyard, and I will not interfere in the affairs of Europe. So that's why US uh, was not part of uh, the colonial rivalries in Africa. The second point is industrialized nations. Right. So therefore, the world had industrialized nations. before the world war 1 for example us was a top economy just like i discussed here but was following policy of isolation in world politics point number b japan was only asian country which was industrialized theek so in asia only japan was industrialized point number c within europe britain was a top economy because industrial revolution had it has begun since 1750 so therefore it was the top economy it was the top industrialized economy second was germany so after 1870 unification of germany germany has very rapidly caught up with the britain and it was rising very fast and it was catching up with britain so there is tension always between number 1 and number 2 right or number 2 and number 3 right so us tarike se rehta so second was germany and was catching up with britain france austria hungary empire etc they were industrializing but they were far far behind right they were far far behind and that was one of the reason also for germany and france uh, rivalry germany is like i am the number second power in the world and france it is nowhere near me but if i look at the colonial empire then france has much bigger colonial empire so therefore it is wrong france does not deserve this kind of a colonial empire that was a rivalry that germany wanted a colonial empire in line with its second rank in europe that was the reason for france germany rivalry anyways coming back to the point france austria hungary empire etc they were far behind russia economy was largely agrarian in 1914 so they had begun with their industrialization in 1870s 1880s however by 1914 they were no very successful there were different problems russia was a huge piece of land and uh, therefore to connect different areas you know it requires huge amount of expenditure theek hai to us tarike se wo thoda sa unka slow tha then so this is point number a b c d and this is point number c then we come to point number um, d acha yahan pe bhi kuch acha ye point number b hai overall so we come here point number c so when we discuss this point number c after the point number b we say polity of the world wo kis prakar ki thi so because at times it is said that uh, in the world if there are democracies then the chances of peace will be more and in the world if there are more dictatorships or absolute monarchies then the chances of war will be more because an individual which is not accountable to anyone his whims and fancies or his ideology that he wants war it can impact anyways so us wise hum in general like polity of the world hum dekhte hain jaise kaiser ke bare mein humne baat kari hi abhi 
ठीक है काइजर वाज सॉर्ट ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर हिज पर्सनैलिटी वाज सॉर्ट ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इंक्रीजिंग डिटेंशन एटलीस्ट उतना हम बोल सकते हैं सो पॉलिटी ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इफ यू लुक एट पॉइंट नंबर ए सो देर वॉज डेमोक्रेसी कहां कहां पर देर वॉज डेमोक्रेसी इन ब्रिटेन इन फ्रांस सिंस एटीन सेवेंटी आफ्टर द फ्रेंको प्रशियन वॉर इन यूएस देर वॉज डेमोक्रेसी आफ्टर सेवेंटीन हंड्रेड एटी थ्री सेकेंड रीडी ऑफ पैरिस then there were countries which had weak democracies supposedly they had a parliament supposedly they conducted elections supposedly they had right to vote for the people but problems were there proper powers were not given to the parliament right to vote was not available to everyone so what do we see so weak democracies are there for example japan germany italy they had such constitutions which did not provide for proper democracy more power was there with the executive and parliament was not uh, powerful enough to keep a check on the executive so therefore this is how it is weak democracies weak democracy and brackets pe kya likha hai can increase chance of war if leader is pro war to ye point hum teesri baar discuss kar rahe hain so isko dobara bolne ki zarurat nahi hai point number c ottoman and austria hungary empires they were you can add russia also they were empires they were monarchies right so russia had a parliament but uh, duma karke but there also your tsar was the main powerful person right so so russia ko in fact yahan pe add karna chahiye because uh, italy was also monarchy germany was also monarchy japan was also monarchy monarchy and similarly or russia was also monarchy but all of them they had very weak democracy right ottoman empire austria hungary they had no democracy they were totally empires or they were totally monarchies right so this is how we can go about so this is how your things are taking place then point number d after 1870 most european countries were in race for industrialization right after 1870 there were chances of uh, there was peace in europe after 1870 this point we have discussed earlier when we discussed the industrial revolution so all the major disputes in europe they were kind of settled after 1870 before 1870 there were disputes like for example 1848 there were uh, uprisings all across europe 1830 there were uprisings all across europe till 1815 napoleonic wars were there 1860s they had wars of unification germany fought multiple battles kingdom of sardinia fought battles so therefore peace and stability was not there in europe until 1870 once it achieved the peace and stability after that they wanted to catch up with britain so therefore most of the european countries they came into a race for industrialization and that's why the colonies they became very important for them because uh, for industrialization you would need cheaper sources of raw material if you have that it will be great for you right similarly if you have an export market in the form of colony it will be great for you you will be able to sell more theek hai to us tarike se ye aapka context of the world war 1 hai theek then uh, a student asked a question regarding uh, rise of us as a world power in the class and therefore uh, we had this side topic side topic of rise of us as a world power so if we talk about us as a world power to kaise start hua first of all rise its first it rose as an economic power right so by 1914 us was the number one economy why it was so so first point it had huge land mass so when you have huge land mass therefore you have huge amount of natural resources which are there in the land iron coal copper cobalt other kind of things right which are there so there was huge amount of natural resources available as a result it did not need colonies as such theek hai because uske paas khud ka hi bahut zyada hai so therefore huge amount of natural resources which are needed for industrialization they are already there with it right and this industrialization was going on rapidly since 1865 that is after the end of that is after the end of civil war of 1861 to 65 so us was busy till 1865 uh, first of all it was doing territorial expansion taking away the lands of the american indians then 1861 to 65 it banned slavery and therefore there was a civil war so therefore peace ultimately came in 1865 and 1865 onwards it began industrialization proper it was doing the trade with the rest of the world it was doing the trade with china it was doing trade with japan so woh koi issue nahi but otherwise its proper industrialization it begins in 1865 or 1865 and 1914 35 and uh, 15 roughly what your 50 odd years i have got for uh, you know uh, industrializing so that's a very good time ठीक है रैपिड इंक्रीज इन पॉपुलेशन बिकॉज ऑफ लिबरल इमिग्रेशन पॉलिसीज इंप्लीमेंटेड बिकॉज यूएस वॉन्टेड वर्कर्स और यूएस नीडेड वर्कर्स देर फॉर यूएस हैड ह्यूज डोमेस्टिक मार्केट सो बेसिकली यूएस इट बिगैन विथ थर्टीन कॉलोनीज ऑब्वियसली थर्टीन कॉलोनीज दे विल नॉट हैव अज अमाउंट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन ठीक है सो देर फॉर यूएस इट वॉन्टेड वर्कर्स फॉर इट्स इंडस्ट्रीज फॉर इट्स फैक्ट्रीज सो देर फॉर यूएस अडॉप्टेड 
very liberal immigration policies that is us welcome with open arms people who are outside of uh, north america uh, they are in europe they are in asia wherever they are so therefore many of that's why many of the people from all across the world they saw united states of america as a land of dreams and they migrated to us and us welcomed them because us needed workers workers are required uh, for the industry plus work plus people are required for having a strong domestic market so when because of this rapid increase in the population and in the us aap koi bhi purani movie dekh lo unke panch panch bachche che che bachche to aisa nahi ki india mein itne sare you know people used to have you know lot of kids in us also you see what is the norm four kids five kids that is the norm so there was rapid increase in population why because of majorly because of liberal immigration policies so why because us needed workers so therefore ultimately around the time period of your like around 1900s etc us had huge domestic market right so therefore when you have a good domestic market then also you do not uh, as such look for export markets all the us was uh, us economy was such uh, that it was fulfilling the demand of its own domestic market and it was uh, trying to export products to the rest of the world okay us dominated c point is us dominated the central and south america okay and us companies gained a lot economically so agar hum bolte hain ki acha sir to fir us ne kya colonialism nahi kiya that is being compensated by central america and south america because us is the dominant power in the whole of americas especially after the 1898 war with spain so therefore uh, now us can uh, you know us companies the us can dominate and us companies they can enter into the economy of central and south american countries and therefore the us companies they can gain a lot तो बेसिकली कॉलोनीज चाहिए नहीं क्योंकि जो कॉलोनियलिज्म है वो लोग ये तो सेंट्रल अमेरिका और साउथ अमेरिका में इकोनॉमिक बेनिफिट्स निकाल ही रहे ठीक है तो इस तरीके से है देन नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज राइज ऑफ यूएस एज ए पॉलिटिकल पावर सो वो कहां से स्टार्ट हुआ तो वहां पे अगर हम देखें सो देर वी सी दैट वर्ल्ड वॉर वन एंड वर्ल्ड वॉर टू दे डिवास्टेटेड यूरोप दिस एक्टेड एज ए कैपिटलिस्ट फॉर यूएस टू बिकम अ सुपर पावर राइट बिकॉज द European economy is they are getting devastated by the two world wars so therefore suddenly we see that US economy is again you know super number one economy and second point is after your uh, world war 2 there was rise of USSR there was fear of communism so therefore now US took upon itself that i will check spread of communism wo hum tab dekhte hain jab hum cold war discuss karte hain to isliye yahan pe mention nahi kiya so anyways world war 1 and world war 2 they devastated europe this acted as a catalyst for us to become a super power so because super power status it is a relative status it is a relative status so what is the gap between rest of the world and us so that gap increased immensely after the world war 1 and the world war 2 especially between europe and the us 1945 it was first one to become a nuclear power so therefore when it became a nuclear power automatically it became the number one military power and therefore automatically it became the number one political power in the world right so therefore that is us rise as a political power so it intervened in the world war 1 after that we will see that it reverts back to policy of isolation but its economy was so intermingled with the rest of the world by the time period of 1920s that it realized that to protect my economic interest i cannot be away from the politics of the rest of the world right so as we discuss your uh, world war 2 cold war etc aapko ye cheez aur samajh mein aayegi so therefore this is how there is but the major contribution is demise of european powers is the major contribution to rise of us as a political power done great okay so now let's move on forward for your questions i would again request please send to the batch coordinators Yes, post 1945. Please send. Can you tell the heading? Heading is side topic: rise of US as a world power. Okay, so therefore that is how your things are operating. Now let us come to the reasons for the World War One. So therefore, if we look at the reasons, what are the reasons for the World War One? Nineteen or fourteen to eighteen, World War One was fought. and what are the reasons so what have we laid the ground kis liye humne abhi ek ghanta in sab cheezon pe spend kiya hai we spend so that ye cheeze humko bahut aasani se kaam aa jaye theek hai so aasani se samajh aa rahe so therefore economic interest national interest is there national interest ke do parts honge something which is geopolitical second something which is economic and national interest so therefore for these reasons the world war 1 will be fought so let us just try to see that what are these national interest or what are these causes of frictions 
which are there, uh, how the national interest of these different countries, they are colliding with each other, how they are not able to resolve them through negotiations and therefore they are going to war to resolve those disputes. So remember in the first slide we mentioned that wars they are a product of failure of diplomacy. When diplomacy fails, then the countries they decide that okay let us re resort to war to solve these disputes, right? And both the countries they will be fighting for their national interest it can be economic national interest it can be geopolitical interest so usi perspective se humko dekhna hai so what is the first aspect which you should be able to very easily guess the first aspect is it it relates to what it is rivalry for colonies so this point it is i hope very very easy for you to grasp why there is rivalry for colonies there is rivalry, rivalry for colonies, point number one, because colonies are important for industrialization. Colonies, they act as a source of cheap raw material and they act as a export market. So therefore, mereko cheap inputs mil jayega, plus I will be able to get a assured seller, uh, assured buyer of my products. So therefore, why rivalry for colonies is there? Because of its, because of their importance. because of their importance in industrialization. They are sources of cheap raw material. Because a colony if you have done it, then you have the right to it. So they are sources of cheap raw materials. Plus, they are also an export market. So this point we have discussed again and again. So I feel that the students, they would be comfortable understanding this or is me kuch hai bani batane ke liye so that is the rivalry for colonies second aspect is nationalism was also a reason nationalism was also a reason we know that since the time period of french revolution there was rise in nationalism in europe we have discussed this point with lot of stress that what do you mean by nation? Nation is summation of people who feel one. And what is nationalism? When that set of people, let's say Indians, Chinese, Germans, French, Japanese, when these set of people, they want glorification of themselves. Right? That is nationalism. They want, so welfare of the nation. That is, they want maximum political power. So they, are, they will strive for democracy internally then they would want superiority in economy also. So they will strive for their own economic welfare. But these are the internal aspects. How does nationalism manifest externally for the rest of the world? So I'll give you a statement. Think about it. Colonialism was a product of European nationalism. Colonialism was a product of European nationalism. Look at the irony. When the British they are striving for their nationalism. What the British nationalism will, be, will mean? It would mean that we want uh, Britain to be a great nation. That Britain it should be a world power. British pa passport should have the highest value. We should be able to say that we have this much amount of colonial empire. That is British nationalism. But see the nationalism of the British, it is hurting the nationalism of Indians. To satisfy the bhook to satisfy the hunger of British nationalism. The Indians, they have to give up their nationalism, their nationalism has to be suppressed and they have to become a colony of Britain. So therefore, this is how nationalism, it can also be, uh, in nationalism it can hurt world peace. Nationalism can hurt the idea of Vasudev Kutumbukam if we move towards extreme nationalism. So there needs to be balance in the nationalism of different nations. Otherwise, one nation will start oppressing the other nation. And that is the difference between nationalism and your global unity, global sohard, jishti shko bolte hai. Right? So, therefore, ek ek interesting sa angle, mene socha ek analytics ke liye, aap sochne ke liye, asa soch ke dekhiye, that British nationalism, it suppressed Indian nationalism. Nationalism of a colonial power suppresses nationalism of a colony. Why? Because the people of the colonial power, they want greatness. They want to say that we want economically economic superiority. So it is in their national interest to have a colony. 
they want to say that we want to feel uh, you know great we want to feel supreme you know we have a culture of nationalism so therefore as a result what happened uh, for example people of italy they pressurized their governments why don't we have colonies people of russia put pressure on their czar why don't we have colonies so therefore now everyone wanted colonies because they wanted to feel that they are a colonial power so impact kya hai aaj ke time pe we study indian national movement whereas the britishers they would be studying that how they um, were the rulers of the rest of the world and how they brought the best things to the rest of the world that is so basically nationalism was also a reason so isme kya hai So nationalism led to demands by the public on their governments to strive for a colonial empire, right? So this is what is there. So they, therefore, rivalry was for colonies was there. This is an economic reason. This is any reason which is related to economy, and this is a reason which is related to culture. Okay. So this is how your things are moving on. The second aspect that we see. So first is the rivalry for colonies. The second aspect is that these colonies. these are separated from the colonial power by sea the colonies they are separated from the colonial power by sea india it is here britain it is there africa it is here germany it is there italy it is there across the sea so therefore which country would be able to have control over its colonies and which country will be able to ensure that uh, it can have more colonies the countries which will have sea power colonialism it depended on the sea power why because the colonies they were separated from the colonial power by the sea so therefore that country which is able to dominate the seas that with that country which has strong navy that country will be able to dominate the colonies that country will be able to have a colonial empire so therefore if you want to get rid of the british colonies uh, if you want to get the uh, uh, if you want to get rid of the colonies for, from britain matlab agar aapko britain ka colonial empire chheenna hai to aap defeat the british navy and then you can easily you know go ahead and capture the colonies of britain why because now the britain british army etc they will not be able to come to india so therefore what is the route if you want to replace another colonial power defeat it in a naval war so therefore that became the second rivalry that is naval rivalry so if this is your point number 1 then second point is your naval rivalry
<coughs> naval rivalry colonies were separated from colonial power by seas and oceans therefore only those countries who had strong navies would be able to acquire colonies and maintain their control over colonies therefore colonial rivalry led to naval rivalry that is if i if germany wants to take over the colonies of france then german navy should be superior to france if germany wants a colonial empire then it would start you know build rapidly building a strong navy so therefore and the rapid build up of the strong navy by the germans it would threaten the british so therefore is point come yahan pe likh sakte hain so iska example example rise of german naval power made Germ made british anxious with respect to its colonies and britain opposed naval build up by germany therefore there existed britain versus germany naval rivalry right and why germany was building its naval power it is written here that is germany it wanted a colonial empire so therefore it knew that if it is able to have a superior navy then it will be able to have a colonial empire so therefore this is how this is the first two set of reasons for the world war 1 so there was a naval rivalry between britain and germany there was a colonial rivalry among all the european powers so therefore rivalry for colonies among eu likh dete hain european powers theek hai among eu powers right so why because of these factors and naval rivalry these factors so therefore is tarike se we can write now so i'll give you One and a half minute or so, or couple of minutes for writing this down. Please write this down. If you have any doubts, please uh, send them across to the batch coordinators, and the batch coordinators on their discretion they can send it to me. One minute, fifteen seconds. Please write down fast. another 15 seconds and then i'll move ahead two minute hone wale hai done okay so okay so two minutes i've given you so now let's move on so this was the second reason coming to the third aspect so we are discussing we are continuing the reasons for the world war 1 so therefore the third aspect let's come to certain bilateral disputes or that is uh, concerns of some individual nations so these are the uh, we are continuing the point number 3 and point number 3 is national interest or uh,
concerns of individual nations. What are these concerns? So, for example, if you look at 3.1, if you look at 3.1, then what is the first concern? One of the most important country, it is your Germany. So, what was the concern of Germany? So, Germany, it felt isolated and isolated and encircled. Germany felt encircled by the rival powers and isolated in the conferences held to resolve the colonial disputes. So, what can be the examples that we can take for? Okay. What is written in the last point? Okay, just one second. Oh, point number one, two. Example: rise of German naval power uh, made Britain anxious with respect to its colonies and Britain opposed naval build up by Germany. Therefore, there existed Britain versus Germany naval rivalry. Okay. So, Britain opposed naval build up by Germany. Therefore, there existed Britain versus Germany naval rivalry. Okay. So, <coughs> Germany felt encircled. How did Germany felt encircled? So, iska kaise hai agar iska point number A dekha jai? So, there was this, these three agreements were there. First of all, in 1894, there was a military alliance there was a military alliance Kiska, Aapka, France and Russia ka. France, Russia military alliance. Second part that we see 1904 Entente Cordial in ke beech mein tha Britain or France ke beech mein Chike? that is an Entente Cordial what does it mean? it means treaty of friendship or cordial relations friendly relations it is a treaty of friendship it is a treaty of friendship not a military alliance And we know that Britain and France and Britain and France resolved their colonial disputes. Okay, so we know that uh, Britain agreed that okay, Morocco it belongs to France, and France agreed that okay, Egypt and Sudan they belong to Britain. So they resolved their colonial disputes kaha pe in Africa. So this we have discussed when we discuss colonialism in Africa. Is tarikhe se pichla har topic agle topic se connected hota hai. Thikhe? So this is what is happening. Third point that we see, ye have ne dis, uh, discuss nahi kiya hai. In 1907, there was this uh, Britain-Russia agreement. And this agreement, so this Britain-Russia agreement was there. Right, so this Britain Russia agreement they resolve their territorial dispute, they also resolve their colonial disputes. They resolve their colonial disputes. Kaise resolve kia, for example. Russia agreed to Afghanistan and India as special interests as 
as special interests of Britain. That is one thing. So Russia, Britain, it felt threatened that Russia might come through Afghanistan and might want to capture India. So therefore, Russia said that you do not have to worry. I am not coming through Afghanistan into India. India, it is yours. Please do not worry. So I am agreeing to your special interest in India and your Afghanistan. So therefore, please do not be worried. Second thing is that your Britain plus Iran was partitioned. Iran was partitioned between Russia and Britain. So they had a dispute with respect to Iran also. Iran is the uh, Middle East is a Middle Eastern country which has a border with, you know, your uh, uh, Russia. Take it So uh, they, Iran was partitioned between Russia and Britain. Take So basically, your North Iran. So it was decided like this. So this is a buffer area. North Iran, it went to Russia. If this is your North Iran, this is your South Iran. So it was decided that this is of Britain. This was decided that it is of Russia. And this will be a buffer zone together which will be um, of none of these powers which will be open to all. So North Iran, South Iran and beach mein buffer zone is the Iran ko divide kar So Iran was partitioned between Russia and Britain. That is what we are writing. Plus Britain agreed to trade and investment. Trade and investment into Russia. What was the reason for this? Why Russia will agree to this? Russia agreed to this because Russia was weak at this particular point of time. Can any student tell me that how Russia was weak around the time period of 1907? Can any student tell me that how Russia was weak around the time period of 1907? Let's see who is able to reply. I request the batch coordinators to turn on the chat. Socialism, no. Russo-Japanese war, great. So you are right. So those students who have mentioned Russo-Japanese war, they are right. So what had happened is that uh, Russia, it had lost. Two reasons are there actually. Russo-Japanese war and Russian revolution, Surya he is right, right. So therefore two reasons are there. First, Russia it was weak. After loss in Russo-Japanese war. And Russian revolution, Russo-Japanese war and Russian Revolution. It's same. Is called like that. Russia it was weak after Russo-Japanese War, and take a plus. Wanted economy to improve. Wanted its economy to improve. To prevent. Repeat. Of Russian Revolution, that is RR. Russian Revolution is RR, 1905. Right? RR is Russian Revolution. I am again repeating. Vapas se chat box mein mat likhna. What is RR? What is RR? RR is Russian Revolution. Dubara bol raun. RR is Russian Revolution. The first Russian Revolution of 1905. So therefore, Russia it wanted. Always remember, any government which is unable to provide for good economy that government will not be liked by the people so therefore there were economic problems in russia especially because of the russo japanese war otherwise also the economy was not doing that great so therefore what do we see russian revolution had happened in 1905 and therefore tsar would want that its people they should uh, experience good economic gains and therefore he said that okay let me uh, come to an agreement with britain the britain they will 
do better trade with me on better terms they will do investment into russia also and therefore this is how my economy will improve and therefore i will prevent a russian revolution so then when russia it is weak then it is the right opportunity to for britain to in cash because russia is ready to give up its claim with respect to afghanistan and india and this is how your things are operating so this is how your three uh, these different powers they are establishing this kind of system and now what is happening if you look at the map then if this is your germany then on the right hand side of germany there is russia on the southern side of germany there is france and on the top side here it is britain so therefore what is germany feeling germany is feeling that these three powers france and russia since 1896 they have a military alliance britain and france since 1904 they have no dis disputes they are together and britain and russia they have also settled their disputes in 1907 so therefore by the time period of 1907 germany feels encircled if you look at the map then if we go to the map then what do we see so here it is the map i'll show you this so this is your map before your world war 1 before world war 1 so here it is your germany see on one side you have uk on second side you have france and then you have russia so therefore if we draw this kind of a system then germany feel feel that these people they are coming together and they are encircling me within a triangle they are encircling me within a triangle and that's why germany it is feeling encircled so is tarike se humne yahan pe map banaya hai germany on the uh, on the right hand side russia britain france so therefore by 1907 we can write so yahan pe ultimately finally green me likh sakte hain that by 1907 germany felt encircled germany it felt encircled right and ye wala jo component hai isolated in conferences held to resolve colonial disputes so here you can talk about the moroccan crisis which we have discussed so here star mark karke you can write down the moroccan crisis 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 1906 and you can talk about agadir crisis agadir agara 11 1911 so therefore these are the uh, these are the conferences which are happening where your germany is being isolated uh, these two conferences we discussed in detail when we discussed colonialism in africa so i hope that part it is clear so i'll give you a couple of minutes to write this down uh, i'll take a question by aditya meanwhile aditya is asking during the colonization of africa why france did not annex abyssinia in spite of having a military alliance with russia see uh, abyssinia it was uh, the domain if you look at uh, the map then abyssinia it was a domain of your एक सेकेंड इसको अगर वर्किंग स्क्रीन को इसमें वी नीड टू ओपन दिस डेटा ट्रैवलर एंड देन वी गो टू वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री सो इन द वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री इफ यू गो टू प्रिजम ठीक है क्लास यहाँ पे आएगा कोलोनिज्म चाइना खुल गया तो वही नहीं था वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री एंड वी गो टू दिस so this should be colonialism in africa so this this map so if you look at this particular map so abyssinia it is here uh, aritya and abyssinia yahan pe aap dekhenge it is it is having major presence of italy so therefore as per the berlin conference uh, in 1885 all of these people have decided that which areas they belong to whom so therefore yes france is present here but in a very small part that is a french somali land and britain is also present here but italy matlab other powers have agreed that okay italy aapko colonial empire chahiye to aap ek libya le lijiye plus you can so basically abyssinia it was desired abyssinia it was desired by italy i think you got confused between france and italy this battle of adowa 1896 it was between france uh, it was between italy and abyssinia not between france and abyssinia right so i think you got confused uh, on that so anyways uh, let's come back so i'll give you time to write this down please write this down i hope the things are clear so acha abhi 626 bhi ho raha hai so we are nearly uh, across our half so let's take a break of 10 minutes in 2 minutes you write this down 8 minutes is your break okay so after 10 minutes we'll meet okay welcome back students so um, shubham has asked a question that yes russia uh, sir russia has land power yes as you say there is naval supremacy always but russia is an exception in this so yes naval supremacy is there but naval supremacy it will operate on the seas it will operate on the colonies which are connected by the seas with the european countries so russia will be a land power where in its lands right so therefore wherever land is concerned there russia will be strong 
right second aspect is that uh, you are saying that britain uh, russia was so powerful as there is no how russia was so powerful as there is no industrialization also that britain had to do an agreement not capture it so russia was decently powerful but when you compare it with britain germany it was not powerful right so russia has been a traditional power we know that uh, around the time period of 1890s it captured some of the 1870s it tried to capture some of the territory of the ottoman in the napoleonic wars also it was russia which defeated napoleon so therefore even napoleon was not able to capture russia so in that sense traditional sense yes russia is a decent power but if you compare it with germany if you compare it with japan if you compare it with your uh, britain then it is not that kind of a power second aspect with respect to annexing russia so every country needs to look at its cost benefit analysis russia has not been able to be captured by even napoleon later on when we see that hitler tries to capture russia even hitler will fail russia it is a huge 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 amount of territory with very uh, bad geography in terms of climate when winters come there the temperature goes to minus 40 degrees celsius right so therefore it is very tough so a lot of uh, landmass in russia it is also sparsely populated so therefore it will be a hugely costly affair for britain to think that it will come from britain all across europe and then it will try to capture russia right so therefore it will be in a very you know uh, far away and in a very hostile thing plus if it is able to capture russia then what will be the reaction of countries like germany will they not attack britain in russia they will why because they do not want this uh, extremely powerful britain right in their backyard plus the russians they will also attack britain so britain will suddenly be aloof in the whole european affair so it is in the cost benefit analysis it is not favorable for britain to try annexing russia because a it will not be able to second if it does then it would uh, have to face a continuous civil war by the russians guerrilla warfare by the russians or some kind of you know one incident or second incident every other day third it might also invite hostilities of the neighboring powers like germany that why you are coming in up in our backyard right you are becoming too powerful and we cannot allow this so because of these reasons it will not go ahead and think about even uh, you know capturing russia uh, was there high amount of acha isme ek aur cheez hai russia was also okay okay like powerful because around the time period of 1870s 1880s they had tried some industrialization although still full industrialization it will begin only after 1920 but it, we are not saying that there were no factories in russia but yes russia was largely agrarian right so some railways etc they had been built in russia but still population wise farmers were in the majority workers they were in a minority because full industrialization had not taken place uh theek hai to is tarike se hai एंड लास्ट पॉइंट आपका क्या था मैं भूल रहा हूँ स्क्रीन से चला गया एक बार अगर आप दोबारा दिखा देंगे बैच कॉन्डिटर्स तो लास्ट पॉइंट को भी एड्रेस कर देंगे छोटा सा एक पॉइंट था लास्ट पॉइंट का ठीक है सो एनीवेज तो अभी जब आएगा तो फिर उसको देख लेंगे अदरवाइज कहा गया मेरा पेन ठीक है तो उस वॉज देर नेशनलिज्म इन रशिया येस देर वॉज नेशनलिज्म इन रशिया ठीक है नेशनलिज्म इज देयर इन ऑल द कंट्रीज ऑफ यूरोप स्पेशली आफ्टर द फ्रेंच रेवोल्यूशन राइट सो दैट इज देयर सो दिस इज हाउ योर थिंग्स आर गोइंग ऑन सो दिस इज 3.1 पॉइंट वन दिस इज द कंसर्न ऑफ जर्मनी जर्मनी इज फीलिंग दे फॉर जर्मनी फेल्ट ठीक है वो हो गया नेशनलिज्म था ठीक है जर्मनी फेल्ट दैट योर इट इज बींग एनजर्कल्ड एंड इट इज बींग आइसोलेटेड सो देर फॉर वॉट इड इट फील इट फेल्ट सो वॉट इज द नेट रिजल्ट सो इसको थ्री पॉइंट वन को अगर हम कंक्लूड करें सो वी कैन राइट डाउन है थ्री पॉइंट वन कंक्लूजन वी कैन राइट डाउन दैट देर फोर जर्मनी केम टू बिलीव दैट वॉर विक्ट्री इज ओनली सोल्यूशन or favorable resolution to its colonial ambitions right so therefore this became a situation then 3.2 the second concern that we can take about is france so if we take a look at france so what is the grievance so inka bhi ek grievance grievance of loss of alsace lorraine
which was very coal rich and therefore it is very very important for industrialization right so the grievance of loss of elzec lorraine to germany in franco prussian war of 1870 so therefore this was a grievance between france and germany france wanted its elzec lorraine back it was an area which is on the border agar hum isko map mein dekhenge to map mein bhi aapko dikha dete hain so so if we look at so if you look at elzec lorraine so here it is your elzec lorraine this is our france between france and germany there is belgium and here it is your elzec lorraine this small black spot which is there this is your elzec lorraine right so this is you know the thing there all to ani it's a black wala sar hai elzec lorraine ye black wale ke left hand side pe silver color ka jo hai that is elzec lorraine the black one it is sar it is also coal rich area it belongs to germany so here it is your elzec lorraine it was lost to germany in the franco prussian war in the franco prussian war of 1870 which resulted in creation of germany and also resulted in establishment of a republic in france a stable republic so this is how your things are going on theek okay. hai so <coughs> questions please ask to the batch coordinators only then i'll respond otherwise the flow of the class it gets disturbed right so france grievance of loss of elzec lorraine 3.3 what was the issue with respect to russia so i'll write it down you will not be able to understand i will then make you understand so two concerns were there first a it wanted so what i have written russia it wanted freedom of navigation through straits of dardanelles so first of all we need to know what are the straits of dardanelles and therefore was anxious about austria hungary empire's designs or aspirations in the balkan so therefore we need to know what is balkan so these two words they become important straits of dardanelles and balkan so the map it will help us so if this is your russia and this is your black sea then the connecting point between black sea and the mediterranean sea is the straits so they are the straits of dardanelles so these are the straits of dardanelles which are there on the right hand side of the straits of dardanelles are the ottomans and on the left hand side the area it is called balkan in balkan there is a country called serbia serbia was a friend of russia 
However, above Serbia there was Austria-Hungary Empire and this Austria-Hungary was an enemy of Serbia, right? So therefore this is how your things are there. Austria-Hungary was an enemy of Serbia. Austria-Hungary was an enemy of Serbia. Serbia and Russia they are friends. This is your Balkan area. Balkan ke andar Serbia hai, right hand side to Ottoman. This is how your things are. Agar abhi bhi samaj bhi aara, so what I'll do is, we'll go to the working screen and there we will see how it is working and whether we can find a solution to this particular thing. Right? So let's discuss about the Straits of Dardanelles. Right? So therefore this is the map of Europe after your World War I and there you see certain new countries are there. So this Yugoslavia it is nothing but Serbia. If you look at the map before, just before. So on the left hand side you see there is a small country called Serbia and this whole area of Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, Montenegro, Albania, Greece, all of this area it is called as Balkan Peninsula. This area it is known as Balkan Peninsula right? and this is your Mediterranean Sea and here you see your Turkey is there and above here it is your Austria-Hungary Empire and on the right hand side there is Russia. Now for the purposes of Straits of Dardanelles if you see that this is your Black Sea this is your Crimea, this is your USSR after the World War I. So therefore th this is your Black Sea. Now if Russia it wants to trade, so therefore its trade would have to happen through the Mediterranean Sea because Russia it is a northern power or is sara kafi sara pani jama hua hai plus apko yahan se kitna lamba na padega. So therefore Russians they want their trade to move through the Black Sea into the Straits of Dardanelles. These are the Straits of Dardanelles. These are the Straits of Dardanelles yahan pe, right? On the right hand side you have the Ottomans or the Turkey and on the left hand side you have this Balkan, right? And earlier there was this Austria-Hungary Empire which had its designs in the Balkans which had its aspiration to control the Balkans. Now since Ottoman Empire and USSR they are neighbors, traditionally they have also fought. So around the time period of 1850s there was this Crimean war also between Russia and Ottomans. Well, they are neighbors, they are enemies. Second aspect is your Austria-Hungary and Germany, they are also enemies of USSR again Russia that is because they are neighbors so therefore as a result what we see when the Austria-Hungary it is a friend of Germany so when Austria-Hungary's influence it is increasing in this area then what will happen pe mera enemy aa jayega. here will be my enemy Ottomans are my enemy they can any day choke my trade so therefore I want access to sea Russia has always desired access to warm waters why because it is a northern country and access to warm waters it is very important. What is the relevance of this point in the current affairs? Today when the Arctic ice it is melting it is very good for Russia. Russia is very happy that the Arctic ice is melting so that it can trade from the north itself. Right? So therefore that is the situation that is there. This is the Straits of Dardanelles and Russia wants that these Straits of Dardanelles they should always remain open to the Russian trade and it does not want this area to be dominated by the Austria-Hungary Empire and the Germans. Why? Because they are enemies of Russia and here you see Turkey it is there. Because uh, also remember 1894 Russia-France military alliance which was there, right? it was with respect to Germany only. So France promised that if Germany attacks Russia, I will help Russia. Russia promised that if Germany attacks France, I will help you. So neighbors are usually enemies and neighbors neighbor our friend. So therefore, agar yahan pe hum dekhe, kaun -kaun neighbors neighbor hai. So you see, neighbors are usually enemies. Neighbors neighbor are friend. Neighbors are usually enemies. So this neighbors are usually enemies. Austria, Hungary, Serbia. Neighbors are usually enemies. Right? Neighbors are enemies. Russia or yahan pe Ottoman. So this basic principle that usually because of geography, neighbors are enemies. Like India and Pakistan are enemy. India and China they are enemy. Whereas China and Pakistan they are friends. Right? So therefore that kind of thing it operates in the world affairs. So anyways coming back to our slide. So this is what we are saying. This is the concern of Russia and therefore what is the issue? Therefore there existed. Therefore there existed. Animosity. Between. Russia. And. Austria-Hungary and Germany right so therefore okay, and Ottomans 
so this is a concern so there existed animosity between russia and on one side and these powers on another side second aspect which is related to it is point number c we have to mention kar sakte hain point number c so serbia it was an ally it was an ally of russia theek hai it was an ally of russia both had slavs so like you have jats like you have rajputs right so slav it is a ethnicity it is having sub components like croats are also slavs serbs are also slavs but your uh, in the balkans these slavs were there and russian dynasty it is also slavic dynasty to wo ethnicity unka same tha both are having slavs plus otherwise also russia was an ally of serbia and both had slavs theek hai to ye ek iska ek reason point ye ho gaya and plus what you can mention here is that serbia it wanted yugoslavia serbia ka dream tha yugoslavia ka agar hum map pe jate hain so you see a new country is coming into picture so is wale area mein this is a map before the world war 1 so here you see serbia romania bulgaria montenegro albania greece before the world war 1 right and after the world war 1 what do you see this whole area it is your yugoslavia so therefore look at the word yugoslavia the word yug in sanskrit it means summation addition so therefore they wanted all the slab people to be added into a single country they said that nation is summation of people who feel one all the slabs they are feeling one they need to be a yugoslavia so it is also called serbian nationalism that they desired that we should have a slavic country called yugoslavia for all the slabs which are there so therefore they wanted yugoslavia they will be able to get this yugoslavia after the world war 1 theek hai isko agar ek aur map mein agar aapko dikhaun तो यहां पे भी आप देखिए दिस इज होल ऑफ योर युगोस्लाविया अर्लियर हेयर इट वाज सर्बिया राइट सो नाउ द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट योर ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी एम्पायर दिस ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी एम्पायर इट वाज अ मल्टी एथनिक एम्पायर मीनिंग इन द ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी एम्पायर देर वर सर्ब्स आल्सो, देर वर स्लैब्स ऑल्सो देर वर चेक्स ऑल्सो देर वर स्लोवैक्स ऑल्सो देर वर जर्मन ऑल्सो सो दे ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी एम्पायर इट इज अगेंस्ट दिस आइडिया that uh, nation is summation of people who feel one and each nation should have its own territory because if each nation have its own territory then it will result in territorial disintegration of austria hungary empire the czechs within the austria hungary empire they will want their czech republic the slovaks within the austria hungary empire they will want their slovakia the germans within the austria hungary empire they would want to be part of germany the slavs within the austria hungary empire they want to be part of yugoslavia as a result the austria hungary empire it will disintegrate it is something like if today people start saying that tamil are a nation and they should have their own country it will result in tamil nadu going out of india people start saying that uh, kannadas or kannadigas they are separate nation and they should have their own country it will result in separation of karnataka from india similarly nagaland will go out of india so therefore that kind of a thing and that's why uh, being an indian is of paramount importance that is you are an indian first and you are a naga later or you are a tamil later so therefore this is your indian nationalism right so therefore this is the kind of thing and uh, those forces which uh, uh, support uh, this tamil nationalism or kannadiga nationalism uh, if they become extreme then they can also hurt the territorial integrity of india right so the religion based nationalism can also be there that all of us are sikh and therefore we want khalistan so that can also hurt territorial integrity of india so this is the thing that your austria hungary empire it was a multi ethnic empire and that's how we need to take care of this particular aspect here so therefore serbia was an ally of russia plus it wanted it wanted a yugoslavia it wanted a yugoslavia by bringing All, all slavs all slavs of balkan together right d point is theek hai to itna hum likh dete hain theek hai so yahan pe bas itna hi likh dete hain baki ko aage mein continue kar lenge so this is called this is serbian nationalism
दिस इज सर्बियन नेशनलिज्म राइट यहीं पे भी लिख सकते हैं अब जगह तो है तो यहां पे लिख सकते हैं विच थ्रेटेंड विच थ्रेटेंड टेरिटोरियल इंटीग्रिटी ऑफ ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी बिकॉज इट वॉज मल्टी या फिर यहां एक काम करो ना इसको ना यहां पे नहीं जबरदस्ती करते हैं ठीक है अलग लाइन में लिख लेंगे कंफर्टेबल रहेगा ठीक है तो ठीक है आप इतना लिखिए नेक्स्ट स्लाइड में एक पॉइंट ऑस्ट्रिया आंग्री से रिलेटेड सेपरेट लिख लेंगे सो आई गिव यू वन एंड हाफ मिनट फॉर दिस प्लीज राइट इट I have given you one minute forty seconds. Please write down fast. Austria Hungary, A U S T R I A, Austria Hungary. and therefore was anxious about uh, point number a is wanted freedom of navigation through straits of dardanelles and therefore was anxious about austria hungary empires designs aspirations in balkan therefore there existed animosity between russia and austria hungary and germany and ottomans okay so i hope likh liya hoga aapne theek hai so give me two and a half minutes next what we have is so isi ko continue karenge उसके बाद नेक्स्ट आ जाता है आपका ठीक है सो पॉइंट नंबर दिस वाज 3.3 सो वी आर गोइंग टू राइट 3.4 सो 3.4 में क्या लिख सकते हैं सिंपल पॉइंट इज देयर 3.4 पॉइंट फोर इज दैट सर्बियन नेशनलिज्म दैट इज देयर डिजायर फॉर यूगोस्लाविया so serbian nationalism it fed in territorial integrity of austria hungary empire
So Serbian nationalism is threatened territorial integrity of Austria-Hungary Empire, also called Habsburg Empire, uh, because it was ruled by Habsburg dynasty. Uh, because it was a multi-ethnic empire and Yugoslavia's creation would have required separation of territory from Austria-Hungary. Therefore, there existed animosity between Austria-Hungary and Serbia as well. So therefore, we see that multiple animosities they are existing. Apart from this, what do we see? Point number 3.5 we can mention. Right? So, Britain ke agar mein mein baat kare. so Britain, as we have mentioned earlier also, so Britain was anxious. about rise of Germany, okay. that is there because wo point, pehle, point number 1 maybe 3.1 maybe we have to and lastly 3.6 we can mention that uh, Europe had divided itself into alliances. which increased chances of a world war, which increased chances of a bilateral war getting converted into a multilateral war. What is a multilateral war? World war. Right? So, Europe had divided itself into alliances. For example, before World War I, on one side you had Britain, France and Russia. They were part of Triple Alliance. Sorry, they were part of Triple Entente. And your during World War One, they are called Allied Powers. Okay, so unka ye naam change ho gaya. Pre World War One, point number B agar dekhe, so there was your uh, pre World War One, there was Italy on one side, Italy plus Germany plus Habsburg. that is Austria-Hungary, they were on one side and they were called Triple Alliance. However, during the World War I, your Italy switched sides. Italy switched sides and uh, these are getting converted, they are called okay, and uh, during World War I, they are called as Central Powers. So, we will come to that key central powers may exactly con con the. So, that part we will discuss. But this is how your things are operating. So, these are overall the reasons for the World War I. And lastly, point number 3.7, you can mention that there was public support to war. There was public support to war because of high nationalism. because of culture of extreme nationalism. So, therefore, public also supported war. Right, so, this is how we complete the reasons for the World War One. These are the different disputes which are happening. So, if you have any doubt, you can forward to the patch coordinators. I will give you one and a half minute to write this down and then we will move forward.
another 30 seconds i'll give you what is in between Italy and uh, sides in B part of pre-war. So Italy switched sides, Italy switched sides, Italy switched sides. So it shifted sides, we will take care of that. It on Suraj is asking Germany restrained Austria from helping militarily Bulgaria against Serbia in the second Balkan war which was an ally uh, to Russia and threat to Austrian empire. Why? Because at that point of time they did not uh, want war. At that point of time Germany did not want uh, the issue to escalate into a war. Also they had restrained because uh, the Britishers they also did not help Serbia. So that's the reason. So they thought ki, okay Britain help nahi kar raha hai, hum bhi help nahi karte. So ye bade issue mein convert ho jayega. But ultimately they could not prevent a World War One. So, next move on. So, next what we have is, so these are the different causes of frictions which are there. These are the different causes of frictions which are there. Ultimately, what are the major events which are there before the run up to the World War One? So, so it's quite title there, events. 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 How did the tensions escalate? Tension kis kis so ye toh aapke uh, thematic reasons ho So actually how the tensions they escalated. So for example earlier we have discussed point number one Moroccan crisis 1906 this increased tensions between this increased tensions between Germany on one side and France and Britain on other side. Right. So, in the Moroccan crisis, we have seen that how Germany was isolated. We have discussed it during the colonialism in Africa. Then, what do we see? 1906. What happened? What happened? 1907. Britain-Russia agreement. And what is the result of this Britain-Russia agreement? Germany's encirclement is complete. On one side you have Russia, on another side you have France and on the top you have Britain. Right. So therefore this encirclement it is complete. Then what happens? Bosnian crisis or Bosnia crisis. This B looks like an 8, this B looks like, like an 8 so therefore 1908. What happened in the Bosnian crisis? Serbia, Bosnia it was part of Ottoman Empire. Bosnia it is near Serbia. It was part of Ottoman Empire. Now Ottoman Empire it is weak. Okay. Ottoman Empire it is weak. So Bosnia it is part of Ottoman Empire and here what happens your Serbia it desired <coughs> Serbia it desired Bosnia for Yugoslavia. Serbia it desired Bosnia for Yugoslavia. Right? But here you see what happens. Austria Hungary Empire Bade Chalu Tarike se kar rahe. Offense is the best way of defense. So they now what they say is that instead of giving you my Slavic territory for creation of Yugoslavia, I am going to take away even take even more Slavic territory. So here the austria hungary Empire, it annexed Bosnia from the Ottoman Empire. Now your Austria-Hungary annexed Bosnia. 
therefore what austria hungary is doing is that instead of giving its own slavic territory to serbia for creation of yugoslavia it is saying that i will take more slavic territory right so therefore your austria hungary it annexed bosnia therefore this created this led to strife or tensions between serbia and austria hungary and now what happened so serbia was like shakti kapoor so in usually you know have you, you must have seen those movies where you know shakti kapoor is like the junior brother of the main villain right and uh, whenever the hero punches shakti kapoor suddenly shakti kapoor will run to you know the elder brother the main villain which is there right so is tarike se situation hai so now serbia what it will do serbia it is very small country it cannot fight the austria hungary empire so therefore now it rushes to bade papa that is russia so therefore your serbia it seeks help of russia russia it is an ally it is an ally of serbia theek hai plus it has concerns that austria hungary it is trying to capture more and more area in the balkan right so therefore russia will be concerned so serbia seeks help of russia which is an ally of serbia and now what happens now russia it calls for a conference russia calls for a conference at this point of time britain and france they were pretty sure that germany which is an ally of austria hungary will go to war in favor of austria hungary britain and france they wanted to avoid war so therefore they did not even attend this conference they did not even attend this conference so russia therefore calls for a conference but britain and france don't attend because felt that germany will go to war in favor of austria hungary if they intervened so therefore they did not intervene why because they do not want war at that point of time right economy will get hurt and all of these things are there so therefore this is thing what is the net result suraj aapka question leta hu what is the acha aapka ha aapko leta hu question what is the net result the net result is that now russia is humiliated so therefore now what happens therefore russia gets humiliated ki bhaiya main conference bula raha hu aur koi aa bhi nahi raha russia gets humiliated and now it starts its militarization that is it will start deploying money on developing a military so it now start its militarization so can deal with any can deal with any threat to serbia from austria hungary in future obviously its own national interest is also involved aisa nahi hai ki bhai giri mein kar raha hai so we have discussed the states of dardanelles so therefore yahan ke andar you should not forget the idea of states of dardanelles that is it was also concerned russia was also concerned regarding states of dardanelles right so therefore this is how what is the net result your animosity between russia and russia is getting militarized so therefore chances of war are increasing right so anyways please write this down and meanwhile i'll take the question from suraj suraj is saying germany restrained austria from helping militarily bulgaria and serbia ha to ye to discuss kar liya na theek hai so please write this down and we'll move forward
obviously next point is very easy इसी के अंदर आप लिख सकते हैं point number four we have already discussed something called Agadir crisis this we discussed when we discussed when we discussed colonialism in Africa that is Agadir island it was captured by Germ uh, Germany and then a conference was held Germany was again isolated right so this Agadir crisis it led to further increase in Germany versus Britain and France rivalry right so we have discussed the Agadir crisis which students don't remember please refer to your previous class notes at that time there was more time so that you don't have time now Vishnath is asking sir why Austria took Ottoman territory because uh, it was far far away from Turkey first point and Ottoman Empire it was weak so therefore um, it took it so they do anyways the Ottoman Empire it is weak and uh, it is right uh, in the Bosnia it is in the backyard of Austria Hungary so therefore they are capturing it control to unka pehle tha formally an speaker liya inhone Ottoman Empire ka headquarter hai Turkey so therefore the Europeans they you know they are not very happy that Ottomans they have uh, some territories in the Balkan area so although they are friends but still your Austria Hungary Empire it is taking away that territory so I have given you two minutes please let me know if you are done last second line uh, therefore Russia felt humiliated and now it starts its militarization so can deal with any threat to Serbia from Austria Hungary in future Agadi crisis it led to increase in Germany versus Britain and France rivalry Russia also concerned regarding states of Dardanelles okay everyone's egos are getting hurt in world history okay. yes you can love with respect to this yes you can see that right so this is how your things are operating so this is point number one two three four point number five pe dekhte hai. so if we look at point number five then what do we have in 1911 there was another small event although it ka it ka relation nahi hai. right 1911 there was a small event Italy it annexed Libya from weak Ottoman Empire okay so from weak Ottoman Empire <coughs> right so that happens they are implementing so star mark here in 1900 France had agreed to Italian control of Libya so this we discuss in the colonialism in Africa right so therefore this is how your things are operating next what we have are the two Balkan wars so point number six it is the first Balkan war so in the first Balkan war what happened around it happened in 1912 and basically here these small small Balkan powers they took away all the territory they uh, took away all the territory of the Ottoman so here what is happening is that the Balkan countries attacked Ottoman Ottoman which is weak attacked Ottoman Empire and took away all its territory in Europe. So Turkey it is part of Middle East, it is having some territory in the form of Balkan area, right? So therefore they are taking away whatever territories they had and uh, in this Balkan war what is happening? So in this war on one side you had the Ottoman and Ottoman or Turkey 
ठीक है दोनों ही बोल सकते हैं कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं ऑटोमन वर्सेस यू हैड वॉट यू हैड एम एस जी बुलडॉग सो मैंने इसका न्यूमोनिक बना रखा है एम एस जी बुलडॉग अटैक टर्की ठीक है तो एक वो हमारे बाबा थे ना एम एस जी वो कुत्ते जैसी थे ठीक है वो अभी जेल में पड़े हुए ठीक है एनी वेज एम एस जी बुलडॉग एम एस जी बुलडॉग मीन मॉन्टी नीग्रो एस इज फॉर सर्बिया जी इज फॉर ग्रीस बुलडॉग इट इज फॉर बुलगेरिया सो दीज आर द पावर्स विच आर डूइंग दिस वॉट इज द नेट रिजल्ट ठीक है सो रिजल्ट तो हम ऑलरेडी मैंशन कर ही चुके हैं सो दिस इज दैट डे टुक अवे ऑल द टेरिटरी एक और रिजल्ट में आप एक और एड कर सकते हो अल्बेनिया इट इज ऑल्सो क्रिएटेड एज ए न्यू कंट्री अल्बेनिया इज क्रिएटेड एज अ न्यू कंट्री instead of giving it to serbia right therefore serbia could not have therefore serbia continued to be landlocked right so basically conference it is happening so serbia so hand of austria hungary in this why uska reason hai that <coughs> britain germany france etc they mediated and they are the ones who are deciding that how to किस तरीके से क्या क्या करना चाहिए सो ब्रिटेन जर्मनी फ्रांस दीज आर द बिगेस्ट पावर टू एंड द वॉर दे आर मीडिएटिंग एंड दे आर एग्रीन दैट ओके विल क्रिएट अल्बेनिया एज अ न्यू कंट्री राधर देन गिविंग इट टू सर्बिया सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर मैप वॉट वी सी सो अल्बेनिया इट इज हेयर ठीक है अल्बेनिया इट इज हेयर सर्बिया इट इज हेयर मॉन्टीनिग्रो इट इज हेयर सो सर्बिया इट इज लैंड लॉन्ग हैड अल्बेनिया बीन गिवन टू सर्बिया economy of serbia would have improved because then it would have had access to sea but you see albania it is created as a separate country so serbia feels that germany it is acting on behalf of austria hungary aur isliye germany ne nahi agree kiya that albania ka jo territory hai it be given to serbia because usse meri economy ko fayda ho jata so i am continuing as landlocked so what is the net result the net result is that animosity between serbia and your this thing it is increasing theek okay? hai so that is the same but then uh, next what you have is the second balkan war second balkan war it was from it was in 1913 and what was the reason here bulgaria was unhappy it wanted some territory which it had been given to serbia so here bulgaria was unhappy it wanted bulgaria wanted more territory एंड देर फोर ये लड़ाई किसके बीच में हुई ऑन वन साइड यू हैड बुलगेरिया एंड ऑन अदर साइड ऑन वन साइड यू हैड बुलगेरिया ऑन अदर साइड यू हैड यू हैड योर ग्रीस यू हैड योर सर्बिया ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं ग्रीस सर्बिया इतना याद रख लो बाकी इतना याद रखने की जरूरत नहीं है सिंपल बाल्कन पावर्स भी बुलगेरिया वर्सेज अदर बाल्कन पावर्स इतना भी बोल दो ये चल जाएगा ठीक है and turkey was also there right so therefore ultimately what is the result bulgaria lost theek okay. hai so this is what is happening theek hai to itna hi important hai usse zyada karne ki zarurat nahi hai and ultimately what is happening is point number 8 point number 8 is assassination of archduke of austria hungary in bosnia assassination of archduke archduke means he was the next king he is a prince so archduke what does it mean prince right so assassination of prince of austria hungary where in bosnia this led to 
this led to austria hungary attacking serbia austria hungary versus serbia war and this war led to world war 1 so therefore this is how your things are operating i'll give you a couple of minutes to write this down please be fast सो so, ये बाल्कन वॉर्स के बारे में ज्यादा कंफ्यूज होने की जरूरत नहीं है आप सिंपली इतना ही बोल सकते हैं दैट इन द टू बाल्कन वॉर्स ऑटोमन एम्पायर लॉस्ट ऑल ऑफ इट्स टेरिटरी इन यूरोप इतना बोल सकते हैं एंड सेकंड पॉइंट यू कैन राइट डाउन मतलब यू कैन थिंक ऑफ दैट एनिमोसिटी बिटवीन सर्बिया एंड ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी इंक्रीज बिकॉज अल्बेनिया वॉज क्रिएटेड एज अ सेपरेट कंट्री इतना बस दो पॉइंट हम याद रख लें वो भी बहुत है वी डोंट नीड टू रिमेम्बर दैट बाल्कन वॉर वॉज फॉर्ट बिटवीन हूम एंड हूम एंड हूम एंड हूम तो इतना सारा याद रखने का जरूरत नहीं है बट हाँ हम अपने नोट्स में एक बार जरूर लिख लेंगे टर्की लॉस्ट ना सो बाल्कन कंट्रीज अटैड ऑटोमन अंपायर एंड टू कवे ऑल इट्स टेरिटरी इन यूरोप सो इट इज ऑब्वियस दैट टर्की लॉस्ट ओके सो नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन ठीक है थोड़ा सा जल्दी जल्दी करिए टाइम भी कम रह गया क्योंकि ठीक है एनीवेज तो वी आर हाफ एन आवर तो इसको तो वर्ल्ड वॉर वन को तो कंप्लीट करेंगे ठीक है तो इस तरीके से चीजें चल रही हैं नाउ द क्वेश्चन दैट कम्स इज दैट व्हाई दिस ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी वर्सेज सर्बिया वॉर गॉट कन्वर्टेड इन टू वर्ल्ड वॉर वाई एंड हाउ Austria Hungary versus Serbia dispute So basically Austria Hungary they said that the terrorists who have killed the prince they are sponsored by Serbia So it was a terrorist attack on the on the life of prince So this is how you are happening So why and how Austria Hungary versus Serbia got converted conflict got converted into a world war तो इसका प्राइमरी रीजन क्या है ना प्राइमरी रीजन इसका अगर आंसर हम लिखें सो प्राइमरी रीजन इज दैट दी अलायंस सिस्टम विच वॉज देयर इन यूरोप सो लाइक इफ यू आर वेन यू आर इन कॉलेज सो देर फोर देर कुड है पार्ट ऑफ एल्फा गैंग समन एल्स इज पार्ट ऑफ गामा गैंग राइट एंड नाउ वॉट इज हैपनिंग इफ वन मेंबर ईच देव हैड सम डिस्प्यूट द नेक्स्ट डे द होल टू गैंग देर वी फाइटिंग अगेंस्ट ईच अदर सो देफ वॉट इज द रीजन इज इज द रीजन इज दैट मेन रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी main reason was the alliance system alliance systems in europe
So what we have written? Main reason was alliance systems in Europe and existence of multiple disputes between multiple European players. This led to merging and manifestation of all those conflicts into a mega war that is world war. Right? So this is your into this maybe conflicts into a mega war that is into a mega war that is your world war. Okay. So therefore this is how your things are operating. This led to merging and manifesting of all those conflicts. So this is the net crux. However, how the things are going on? The things are going on like this. See the series of events. How the line system is working. Have you seen the movie Kate? In the movie Kate or the Reservoir Dogs, <coughs> if you have seen. So what happens is there are gangs. So if I am Amitabh Bachchan and I have put a you know pistol on your head, then what will happen? Some other person who is your friend, he will put a pistol on my head. Then some my friend would put a pistol on his head. And ultimately, when one person fires, everyone fires and everyone dies. That is what happens. Right? So therefore, you can see that particular scene from Kate movie. Kate movie last scene. Go ahead and see. And you will be able to see that what is happening here. So what is happening here is, is see this. First of all, your after the assassination of Archduke, your Austria-Hungary Empire. Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia. Now, Serbia ka friend kohan hai Russia? <coughs> so, therefore, Russia give its, gives its support to Serbia. When Russia gives its support to Serbia, then Austria-Hungary is alone. Who is the best friend of Austria-Hungary? Germany. Germany now threatens Russia to back off, else Germany will support Austria-Hungary in a war. Right? That means the war will be Germany plus Austria-Hungary versus Serbia plus Russia. So, what is the situation? Now, the situation is this. Germany plus Austria-Hungary. How will this increase? Versus Russia plus Serbia. This is the situation. Now what happens is, so Germany threatens Russia to back off, else Germany will support Austria-Hungary. Right? Now what happens, Russia does not back off. When Russia does not back off, then what happens? Germany is also concerned that there is a military alliance of 1894 between Russia and France. So if I fight a war with Russia, then from the left hand side France will attack me because Russia and Germany, Russia and France they have a military alliance. Therefore, to prevent fighting war on two fronts, two fronts means on the right hand side there is a front between Russia and Germany, war is going on and on the left hand side there is a front between France and Germany. So therefore, if I fight a war on two fronts, then my army gets divided into two. So therefore, let me let me surprise France and let me attack France. So basically, now what Germany does? So Germany declares war on France, on Belgium, on Russia, on Serbia. Plus makes an alliance of Ottoman plus Austria Hungary 
प्लस इट सेल्फ दैट इज जर्मनी अब सवाल ये आता है वाई डिड इट डिक्लेयर वाई डिड इट अटैक फ्रांस सो हेयर वॉट यू कैन से सो बेसिकली फ्रांस को अटैक इसलिए किया बिकॉज ऑफ सो वॉट इज द रीजन सो रीजन इज रीजन वॉज नंबर वन फर्स्ट इज द फ्रांस रशिया मिलिट्री अलायंस सो देर फॉर ऑब्वियसली रशिया थॉट जर्मनी थॉट दैट इफ आई अटैक रशिया फ्रांस विल डेफिनेटली कम सो देर फॉर वाई डू नॉट आई सरप्राइज फ्रांस सो देर फॉर मिलिट्री अलायंस ऑफ एटीन नाइनटी फोर सेकेंड इज वाई बेल्जियम सो बेसिकली देर वॉज अ प्लान कॉल्ड स्लीफ इन प्लान सो इट वॉज पार्ट ऑफ मिलिट्री स्ट्रैटेजी दैट इफ वी अटैक फ्रांस थ्रू बेल्जियम if we attack france through belgium then we will be able to defeat france in 6 weeks this was schlieffen plan that's why they attacked belgium also so there was this plan called schlieffen plan what does it said it said that attack france via belgium to defeat it in 6 weeks what will be the benefit so i have defeated france in 6 weeks now i can focus all my energies on russia and this way i will be able to prevent a continuous war on two fronts right so therefore this is why belgium it is being attacked now the problem is belgium was under protection of britain so therefore now what happens britain declares war against germany and all the others germany etc because it is an ally of belgium then what happens japan and britain they were allies and japan wants german pacific islands japan wants the pacific the islands in the pacific which are with germany so japan thought that if i am able to defeat you know these powers in a war then i will be able to get german pacific island so therefore now japan declares war on germany etc because wanted german pacific islands plus it is an ally of britain plus it is an ally of britain so therefore ab kya ho gaya ab ye world war ho gayi so therefore this is how your alliance system it is working but to aapko itna ratta maarne ki jaruri nahi ki kisne kisko kisne kisko but for depiction ki how this alliance system is working this is how your things are taking place right so this is the major aspect of the your how your world war 1 it is happening so please write it down i'll give you couple of minutes uh after against germany japan declared uh kahan pe britain declares wars against germany etc because ally of belgium so because britain is an ally of belgium theek hai so britain declares war against germany etc because germany Austria Hungary Empire Ottoman Empire sab kuch because it is an ally of Belgium Japan declares war on Germany etc because wanted German German Pacific Islands plus Japan is ally of Britain right so therefore this is how your a small bilateral conflict it is getting converted into a world war please write it down Okay, so I have given you one and a half minute. So I think it should be good enough.
I'll give 10 more seconds for students who are yet to write it down. So this is how your World War One is happening. These are the major reasons. Next is during the World War One. So basically, what are the major the events? We are only going to talk about major events. How they happen? So first point is Britain defeated Germany in war at sea. That is naval rivalry. Settled in favor of Britain. Naval rivalry got settled in favor of Britain, and this happened when by 1916. Second aspect is that two-front war. continued for germany that is germany versus france on western front plus germany versus russia on eastern front two front war continued for germany and any country which is fighting war on two fronts it is a big distant advantage and why this two front war continued because schlieffen plan failed schlieffen plan kehta tha that within 6 weeks we will be able to defeat france but they were not able to defeat france schlieffen plan failed why did the schlieffen plan failed the schlieffen plan failed because of trench warfare because of something we call trench warfare because of stalemate of trench warfare what do you mean by trench warfare imagine that this is your level ground imagine this is your level ground now what will happen in the trenches is that these people they will dig trenches so soldiers they will be here so they will dig the ground zameen mein gadde khod denge trenches ka matlab hota hai gadda theek hai pits so they will these people they will dig trenches so these are the french soldiers which are let's say present here right and similarly the german soldiers they will dig trenches over here right and this is the let's say the ground so what will happen is why it is a stalemate first point is that when these german soldiers let's see these are german soldiers let's say they are french soldiers so this is happening where it is happening in france right trench warfare what is this trench warfare so what will happen when these people they try to charge they get defeated because they become easy they become easy shot in loika charge they are in the open ground these people are in the trenches they can be easily shot similarly when these people charge they can be also easily shot down by the germans and as a result that six week victory never came and the war became a you know stalemate happened no one is winning the war it's a tie and german forces are present in france and this is how these things are happening simultaneously upar se kya kya ho raha hai upar se barish ho raha hai ठीक है बारिश हो रहा है ये अपना जिंदगी यहां पे जी रहे हैं ठीक है तो ये सब चीजें रहेगा फॉर मेनी मंथ्स दीज सोल्जर्स दे आर कंटिन्यूइंग टू लिव हेयर राइट सो दिस इज व्हाट इज हैपनिंग व्हाट वाज द वन ऑफ द नेगेटिव इंपैक्ट वो चलो नेगेटिव इंपैक्ट उसका देख लेंगे ठीक है सो पॉइंट नंबर थ्री अगर इसका देखा जाए सो देखो टू फ्रंट वॉर इट हैपन दिस इज थिंग्स इज हैपनिंग देन वॉट इज हैपनिंग इज देन देर वॉज दिस यूएस एंट्री इन टू दॉर इन 1917 so therefore next question comes why us joined allied powers and gave up its policy of isolation so us entered the world war 1 in 1917 to kyu enter kiya us into the world war 1 the reason was unrestricted submarine warfare by germany actually what had happened britain had defeated germany in the war at sea 
So at the surface level of the sea, the battleships are there. So there the Germans are eliminated. But now, simple point is that if Germans are getting defeated in a war at sea, then it is a big defeat. So therefore, to cut off the supplies, to cut off the supplies of the allied powers, that is your Britain, etc., Germans they begin unrestricted submarine warfare. Look at the words unrestricted submarine warfare. So point number A is called unrestricted submarine warfare by Germany. by Germany led to destroying of US merchant vessels okay, led to de destroying of US mer uh, merchant vessels and loss of US civilian lives or US civilian. So what happened? Unrestricted submarine warfare. Submarines they are inside the sea. They are deep below the sea. So what will happen in a submarine warfare is that imagine that if this is your submarine which is there. So what will happen is that some information. So imagine that this is a ship that is there. Now some information will come to the submarine. Radar will locate this particular ship. But how does the submarine knows that whether this particular ship it is a US ship or it is a British ship or it is a French ship. Some information will come which will confirm this and submarine then will attack this particular ship if it is a British ship. But this whole process it took time. Germans they were running short of time because they had been already defeated in the war at sea by the British. So therefore they instead of waiting for you know this information they starting attacking each and every vessel they could locate in the hope that they would be able to somehow win the war at sea they started attacking each and every ship without caring that whether it is an enemy ship or it is a neutral ship this is known as unrestricted submarine warfare by germany led to destroying of us vessels and loss of us civilians life this is the unrestricted submarine warfare. What is the meaning of unrestricted submarine warfare? Without confirming, that is, yahan pe star mark karke likh sakte hai, that is, without confirming, without confirming identity of surface vessels, without confirming identity of surface vessels that is the meaning of unrestricted the word unrestricted it means without confirming the identity of the surface vessels and therefore us which is not part of this war now it enters into this war why because your this thing is there now germany was not stupid germany knew that it is quite possible that i might end up shooting off some of the us ships but still as a matter of last resort resort it still continued with this because it thought that before US enters the World War One, maybe I will be able to defeat the British. So therefore, anyways, they went at this is unrestricted submarine warfare by Germany led to destroying of US vessels. Right? So why did they began this unrestricted submarine warfare? It was because of this defeat. So it is because of point number one. Because of point one. They were desperate. So because of point one that is Britain has already defeated them at the war at sea so therefore now they are beginning this right so that's why your that's why your Germany andadun firing yes so therefore this is how your things are operating okay unrestricted this is how your US enters then apart from this okay uh, so this is how your thing is uh, second point a detail so enter US enter Okay, apart from this, what is the situation? Mm, or kya hai? Unrestricted submarine warfare. Hai. So basically, ab ultimately, as per result, pe a so what is the result? Result is obvious. Germany lost. Why? What are the reasons? First reason you can mention, it's isko na next line. Mein karenge, Germany lost. Iske reason next slide mein karenge. Okay. So you write this down. I'll give you a minute for this. Zada hai nahi isme. 
So write this down and we will write the reasons on the next page. War history, battle history that is not part of UPSC syllabus. We are not studying for the NDA exam. So itna humne likh liya, utna bahut hai. Ultimately we need to, but, but we need to know why the Germans lost. So therefore that uh, analysis we will do in the next slide. So please write this down. Actually couple of other reasons were also there. Ab yaar mujhe aap poke kar dete ho fir. Couple of other reasons were also there. Chalo likh lete hai. So this is point number A. Point number B likho. Thik hai. US was more comfortable. US was comfortable. Joining allied powers. As now. Tsar was no more. Ruler of Russia. After. Russian revolution. Of February 1917. So US is a democracy. So that's why. And US is a democracy. So public ka support chahiye. So if US is fighting a war. On side of a country. Which is autocracy. Which is a monarchy. Which is not a democracy. Then US will be a little discomfortable. Uncomfortable. But now US was comfortable joining the allied powers. Why? Because by the time period of February 1917. First Russian. The second Russian revolution had happened. And now Tsar was no more the leader. So therefore it was more comfortable joining the allied powers. So that becomes the reason. Okay. Uh, achha, Italy wala bhi part hai. Italy came to the scenario. Wo bhi join kar lenge. Okay. Oh, haan, ek point rahe gaya tha. Usko likh lenge. C point was aapka Zimmerman plan. Okay. Ek isme ek aur reason tha. There was a conspiracy. So point number C. It is called Zimmerman plan. Of Germany. Zimmerman was their foreign secretary. So or foreign minister. Okay. Is tarikhe se. So Zimmerman plan. Germany ka kya tha? Germany to delay the entry of the US into the World War One, it wanted to incite Mexico to attack US. So it was a conspiracy which did not succeed. So here is the Zimmerman plan. So basically it was a German conspiracy It was basically German conspiracy to make Mexico attack US. Q tha? To delay US entry into World War One, So that it get busy there. It was a German conspiracy to make Mexico attack US, to delay US entry. Why will Mexico attack US? Because US was interfering in the internal affairs of Mexico. There was a popular leader of Mexico called Madero. He was executed, killed by the CIA around the time period of 1912-1913. So there was some animosity between Mexico and the US. So therefore Germans thought that if we are able to make Mexico attack US, then we will be able to delay the entry of the US into the World War One. We will prevent the Allied powers becoming more and more powerful. So therefore, this is the thing. Achha, ek chota sa point hai during the war, jo ki, uh, hai, finally pooch liya, Subhalakshmi ne, uh, how Italy came into the scenario and switched sides. Kind of, theke, to isme reason hai ke aap likh sakte hai. Point number one hai na, to yahan pe likh, likh sakte hai. Point number ek yahan pe 1915. Italy joined Allied powers on promise of huge territory by Britain, France, etc. So basically, Italy ko lalas diya gaya, bribe diya gaya. So it is nothing but bribe. So it is nothing but drive. So they are saying that you fight from side, when we win, we will give you a lot of territory from both sides. Second point is, two front war continued for Germany. That is Germany versus France is one front. Germany versus Russia is another front. So basically two fronts. No country can afford to fight on two fronts. 
बिकॉज स्लीफन प्लान फेल्ड स्लीफन प्लान क्या करता द प्लान वॉज टू डिफीट वॉट इज स्लीफन प्लान स्लीफन प्लान क्या है स्लीफन प्लान इज डिफीट फ्रांस इन सिक्स वीक्स That is your Schlieffen Schlieffen Plan. Plan So they are unable to defeat France in six weeks. Why? Because Schlieff and Plan failed. Why did the Schlieff and Plan fail? Because of stalemate, which was created by trench warfare. In the trench warfare, लोग गड्ढे खोद दे रहे हैं जमीन में जो बंदा ऊपर आ रहा है वो मर जा रहा है अब यही अपनी जिंदगी यहीं पर जाएंगे कोई ना जीत रहा कुछ नहीं हो रहा है यहाँ पे ठीक है तो दैट इज योर सिचुएशन ठीक है तो प्लीज राइट इट हो एंड वंस यूर डन प्लीज रेट मी सर अपर लाइन नॉट विजिबल कौन सा लाइन नहीं विजिबल है एक सेकेंड अच्छा तो अपर लाइन में कुछ नहीं लिखा हुआ है इटली ज्वाइन अलाइड पावर्स अपर लाइन में बस लिखा हुआ है इटली ज्वाइन अलाइड पावर्स हा जूम आउट कर लेते हैं ये भी अच्छा तरीका है इटली ज्वाइन अलाइड पावर्स अब विजिबल हो गई होगी इटली ज्वाइन अलाइड पावर्स थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर द सजेशन तो आप इसको लिख लो यार बस एक आपके दो मिनट और लूंगा मैं उससे बस हमारा टॉपिक कंप्लीट हो जाएगा एक सेंस ऑफ सेटिस्फेक्शन सी हो जाएगी ठीक है हो गया प्लीज लेट मी नो हो गया ना ठीक है अब इसमें बस सिंपल सी चीज है एक ज्यादा कुछ नहीं है वाई अलाइड पावर्स Why Allied Powers won the World War वन तो इसमें सीधी सी बात है पहली बात अगर रिसोर्स रिसोर्स डिस्पैरिटी यू कंबाइन यूएस विच इज द लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी यू एड रशिया विच हैज ह्यूज रिसोर्सेस बहुत बड़ी है रशिया Huge resources and army. You add Britain, which has huge number one colonial empire. It has the biggest colonial empire. So therefore, versus kya hai? Dekho, aapke opposite me kon hai? Opposite me countries hai Bulgaria, Germany. इतना बड़ा कॉलोनियल एम्पायर नहीं ऑटोमन विच इज ऑलरेडी परमानेंटली वीक ऑस्ट्रिया हंगरी जिसके पास कोई कॉलोनियल एम्पायर है ही नहीं राइट सो दे फोर रिसोर्सेज आप देखोगे रिसोर्स कंपेरिजन में रिसोर्स डिस्पैरिटी देर फोर दे लॉस्ट सेकेंड इज जर्मनीज स्लीफ एंड प्लान फील्ड एंड नो कंट्री कैन फाइट वॉर ऑन टू फ्रंट therefore it was a two front war for germany right so that's why this is the thing this is how your things are taking so why allied powers won the world world war so one is your resource disparity second is your schlieffen plan it is failing right so this is how your things are happening so this this becomes the major reason for the victory theek hai apart from this third point obviously you can mention isi mein hi trench warfare led to stalemate theek okay. hai so fourth point you can mention that your british navy proved superior to german navy right so this is how your things they are happening so is tarike se what is written after मैक्सिको आफ्टर मैक्सिको क्या लिखा हुआ है जी आफ्टर मैक्सिको लिखा हुआ है टू डिले जर्मन कॉन्स्पिरेटी टू मेक्स मैक्सिको अटैक यूएस छोटी छोटी चीज है ना छोटी छोटी स्पेलिंग ऐसी सी हो जाती है जिससे समझ में नहीं आता बच्चों को अटैक अटैक यूएस टू डिले यूएस एंट्री इन टू वर्ल्ड वॉर वन मैक्सिको टू अटैक यूएस टू डिले यूएस एंट्री इन टू दी वर्ल्ड वॉर वन and lastly this so on that note we end our class in the next session we will be talking about the interwar years that is between the world war the impact of the world war 1 bahut simple hai ki bahut sare log mare bahut 
इकोनॉमी डाउन होगी बहुत सिंपल है कुछ नहीं उसमें सो इंटर वॉर इयर्स एंड दी रन अप टू दर्ल्ड वॉर टू विल बी आर टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन आई विल मेकिंग आई एल बी सेंडिंग अक्रॉस वन पर्टिकुलर पीस ऑफ पी डी एफ प्लीज रीड इट माई हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट सो इट विल अलाउ अस टू मूव ऑन विद सिलेबस सो थैंक यू फॉर योर टाइम एंड गॉड ब्लेस यू स्टे सेफ ठीक है सो इस तरीके से है आप करिए इसको लिखिए I'm waiting अभी ठीक है so I hope you're written. I would like to just take टू minutes more of you. So he was uh, Zulfikar sir. He was a amazing and brilliant teacher, very great human being. and very sadly we lost him uh, to covid a um, couple of days back so it is just i'm taking this opportunity to pay my respects to him and like he was like a very good human being and a very great teacher okay so just uh, on that note my prayers would be with you and your families also so i just uh, request you to pay your regards your respect to him please remember him in your prayers and please be safe thank you god bless you